May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. For those of you who do not know, we follow a schedule of the readings, which is where they come from. They're not just randomly selected. Um, and you can follow along too. On the website, the, um, under the weekly readings, uh, we have all these readings up there for you. Now, obviously, there's too much in, uh, in one full reading for anybody to cover. Oh, look, our website. If you click on the middle tab, the, uh, the weekly readings, um, the readings will be up there. If you scroll down just a little bit more, uh, right there, Vayelech, Shabbat Shabbat, all the readings from today uh, are, are on there, the entire portions. Now, obviously, again, there's too much in each particular portion for me to focus on uh, the entire thing. So each Shabbat, I narrow it down a bit to, to what the Lord is leading me uh, to, to speak about, and that's what we end up reading here at services, but you can certainly go ahead and read through all of those readings. Uh, if you do, you will end up reading through the entire Torah every year. Uh, you will read additional passages from the Brit Hadashah and the Haftarah, um, but you'll read through the entire uh, Torah in a year. This morning's portion, as I mentioned, is Parshat Vayelech. Parshat, Parshat Vayelech. Now the word Vayelech comes from the root word, anybody know? Anyone? What did you see over there? Oh, okay. It comes from the word halach. Does anybody know another word that comes from the word halach? Halacha, that's exactly right. Halach means to go, to come, or to walk. So halacha is the way we walk, the walk. Um, that is the body of uh, Jewish law and tradition that dictates how they live uh, their lives. So that is from uh, the word halach, which means to go, to come, or to walk. Vayelach, usually translated as, and he went. And he went. That is the name of this morning's portion. This morning is also a special Shabbat. There are several special Shabbatot, uh, which is plural for Shabbat, uh, throughout the year. This is one of them. We have recently come through the, the feast of Yom Teruah, uh, that is uh, Rosh Hashanah. And it began a 10-day period of time called Yomim Noraim, Yomim Noraim, the days of awe. They are the 10 days between Yom Teruah and Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur begins this Tuesday evening. The Shabbat that falls between them is called Shabbat Shuva. Shabbat Shuva. It means the Sabbath of return. The Sabbath of return. Sometimes it is known as Shabbat Tishuva, which means the Sabbath of repentance, but it's, it, it's most commonly referred to as Shabbat Shuva. Now the Torah portion of this morning is Moses' last stand. Uh, he tells the children of Israel, I am 120 years old today. I am no longer able to come and go. This is the biblical way of saying, I'm getting too old for this stuff. <laughs> so he tells them that he will not be going with them into the land. And the major portion of this theme, if you were going to put a, a, a theme uh, on it, the major, major theme of this portion, rather, uh, is to be strong and courageous. Uh, during this portion, he also tells them, look, y'all, I ain't going with you. The Lord told me, I, I, I'm not crossing over with you. So you're going to need to be strong and courageous because I'm not going to be there to intercede. I'm not going to be there to do all those things that I was going to be doing for you. You're on your own. But he says, you're not really going to be on your own. Because it doesn't matter whether Moses goes in with them or not. The Lord is going to go in with them. This is one of my favorite favorite verses of encouragement. In the Hebrew, it says this. In, uh, if it's found in uh, chapter 31 in verse 8. It says, Adonai, hu haholech lefanecha, hu yichye imach, lo yarpecha, v'lo yaazvecha. Adonai, the Lord. Hu haholech. He is the one who goes, that's 
halach again. You see that word repeated again, halach. Hu hachulech lefanecha. He is the one who goes before you. Hu yichyeimach. He is the one who will be with you. Lo yarpecha. He will not fail you. Volo yaazvecha. And he will not abandon you. That word there, uh, azav, azav techa, he will not abandon you. We hear that again coming from the mouth of Yeshua the Messiah on the cross when he says, Eli, Eli, lama azavtani. Azav is that same word. Valo yaazvecha. I will not forsake you. Eli, Eli, lama azavtani. My God, my God, why lama azavtani? Have you forsaken me? So it's an incredible passage. He will not abandon you. He will not fail you because he goes before you. He goes with you. And still, even in the midst of this incredible encouragement that Moses is giving to the children of Israel, the passage continues, and he tells them, God tells Moses, rather, that when Moses dies, the people are going to turn right to idolatry. He says, they will play the harlot with strange gods from the land. Now, on the Sabbath of return, one might expect to find this portion ending with an additional encouragement. And after those days, when the children of Israel turn to other gods and play the harlot with strange gods from the land with, 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 you know, where you are getting ready to go to take and possess, they shall return to me, the Lord their God. But it doesn't say that. I and mean, we know the story. We know how, how Paul sees it as well. Uh, but you would expect something like, and then they return to their God, or something like that. Now, when I think of that, I think of the movie The Perfect Storm. Have you, ever, have you seen the movie The Perfect Storm? George Clooney and that whole crew? Based on a true story. So if you knew the story ahead of time, the end of the movie doesn't surprise you. If you don't know the movie... You're sitting at the end of the movie and this incredible storm and the waves are spa you know, smashing all around this little tiny fishing boat. And you're saying to yourself, oh, here it comes. The fish, that, that rescue boat's going to come right around and they're going to save them. And, and it doesn't happen. And you, they're now in the water. And like, oh, here it comes. That helicopter's going to come by and they're going to pick them right up out of the water. And, and then the next thing you see, they're in the church. And they're having a funeral. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, this is supposed to be a happy ending. What's wrong with this movie? And the people around you are like, didn't you read the book? No. Well, if you don't know the story, you end up getting this kind of twisted image. There's no place in this portion that says that the children of Israel will return. Thank God we've seen the end of the movie. We know the book. And eventually, they will return. The bottom line, and I think the, the, the reason that we're reading this now on Shabbat Shiva in this context of encouragement and then what seems to be a turning away is the fact that on Shabbat Shiva, when we talk about turning back to God, the fact remains that if we never turned away from God to begin with, we wouldn't have to return, now would we? So we're reading here in the, our, our Torah portion about a turning away from God. Now, 
According to Chabad, Chabad is uh, an Orthodox Jewish organization. This is what they say about Shabbat Shuvah. On Shabbat Shuvah, one should be especially careful to concentrate entirely on Torah, prayer, and reflection on repentance, thereby attaining forgiveness for whatever unfitting behavior may have marred other Sabbaths. Now, on the surface, it sounds pretty cool. Well, yeah, we, we, we study the Torah. We, you know, we, we focus on repentance and, and all. But one of the key features of forgiveness, we talked about this a little bit last week, is that it's a gift. It's a gift. Now, you can forgive yourself, for sure. But you cannot cause, command, compel, or earn somebody else's forgiveness. That must be 